We want to thank you for joining us at Cowboy Junction Church today. As you hear this message, we pray that your faith will grow and you will be both encouraged and challenged. We would really love it too if you would subscribe, rate, review, and share this online. You can also help us reach others by partnering with us financially. You can easily give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift at cowboyjunctionchurch.com slash give. We hope you enjoy the message today. So this is the last and final message in the series we've been in called Yeah, But Why? And uh, I've really enjoyed this. I, uh, I've had a lot of people, uh, my mom, who said that uh, it's been a great series. And uh, we've taken some time to um, really teach. The messages have been longer than we normally go, but it's because the teaching has been necessary to cause us to uh, grow and to gain wisdom and to know what Scripture says about stuff. If, if I had a recommendation for anybody that's like, well, I have questions, start by going and listening to this series all over again, okay? It's going to be my go-to uh, for a long time of saying, listen, you got to go back and listen to this series. you got to listen to this series. And it's because it encourages questions, it encourages how to ask questions, but at the same time, it, it encourages you to think about some questions maybe you're not thinking about. And um, today, we're going to wrap this up with um, uh, what I think is, the, it was probably the first, the very first message that I put together for this series, but it's the last one that I'm going to speak to you. And uh, it's called, Yeah, But Why? You. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for today. Today, Jesus, I pray that you would open our ears to hear. I pray, Father, that, the, that people would see you differently. Jesus, show us who we are in your big plan. Open the ears to, to hear and the hearts to receive and my mouth to speak. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we open this up to all the questions that could be asked. The college students asked a bunch of questions. You asked a bunch of questions. And there were questions that came up, and, and a lot of them really were those questions that are the tough ones to answer, okay? If God is really God, if God is as big as he really is, if he loves us as much as he loves us, uh, some of the questions that came up a minute ago were maybe some questions you've asked. Why doesn't God fix all the bad stuff in the world? That's a great question. Why doesn't God fix all the bad stuff if God's God? If God is all-powerful, why is there so much violence in the world? Have y'all seen just an escalation in violence? It's just crazy. It's just so much, so much violence. Um, why doesn't God finish world hunger? <laughs> Gosh, if, if America is able to produce so much food, if the world is able to produce so much food, why are there countries that are starving? And, and another question you saw up there, is God, is God even going to put a stop to violence and cruelty? And, and maybe you've asked these questions. But today the message isn't to point the finger at God is to remind us of why God created you. Yeah, this was a big revelation for me growing up. For me growing up, I never thought I made much difference. I never thought I had a voice. I never thought I, I was strong enough, rich enough, powerful enough. Uh, as a teenage kid growing up, you see all the issues and you wonder how things are ever going to change. But, but this is what I realized is that I, I can't fix everything, but I can do something. One of my favorite things here at Cowboy Junction is just to turn to people and, and when they come to me and they say, hey, Ty, you really need to get somebody to go do that. Like, for instance, someone needs to take a bus and go pick up kids, or someone needs to help the single moms in Lee County, or someone needs to, someone needs to do something about uh, kids that don't have anything to eat for the weekends, and, and they turn to me, and they want me to do something. They turn to a staff member, and they say, we want you to do something. And one of our fun statements around here is, isn't it funny that God's not showing us the need, he's showing you the need. I think that's real important when you stop and think, why doesn't anybody see the need out there. It's like everybody's walking around blind. If, I, if there's anything I've learned as a pastor is, is if, if the, the, the gift of sight is a gift, so is the gift of blindness. Okay? Don't you think about that. 
don't you dare curse your blindness. Because you are not here to fix every problem in the world. But there is something you see that God has specifically showed you that he's not showing anybody else. And that's a gift as much as your blindness is a gift. But if you run into someone who complains about everyone else's blindness, you remind them. God apparently showed you something. He's not showing everybody else. So welcome to the cool kid club. It's time to do something. <laughs> Listen, for, for the folks in the room that you're still wrestling out this Jesus thing, you're, you're, this God thing, I, I want to just encourage you. In a way, I'm talking to you, but in a way, I'm not. I don't want you to now go try to fix the world in the present condition you're in. Because I want you to be very, uh, understand where I'm coming from. You, without the power of God, are just human, okay? And that's not a bad thing. That's a wonderful thing. There's just some things that you need to understand before you take some steps forward. The one thing you have to know right now is don't you dare go try to be something else. Don't you go to try to be anything until you understand who you are in Christ Jesus. Because let me tell you what, there's nothing like doing the right thing and getting burned out doing the right thing. It's the worst. It's the worst experience ever. You think burnout's bad. Wait until you do the right thing and you get burned out doing the right thing. And you turn around and go, what did I do wrong? See, there's no God. And the fact is, is that, no, 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 you got the cart before the horse. You got things turned around. You, 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 you went about it the wrong, right way. And the most important thing is for you to stop and realize, who are you in Christ Jesus. But now I'm going to turn to all my friends who at some point in your life, you decided there is a God. At some point in your life, you recognize the God-sized hole in your heart. At some point in your life, you turned and you realized that Jesus is real and I need him. And the moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you chose to follow him with all of your heart, let me just tell you, a part of following him is going to the need. There are problems in this world and there are problem solvers. And God doesn't make problems. God makes problem solvers. And one of the things you have to start asking yourself in the discipleship of your heart, are you more of a problem than a problem solver? And the, the, the real deciding factor of who you are in high school or who you are in junior high or who you are in high school or who you are in this world and who you are at church or who you are at work is are you a problem or are you a problem solver? And problem solvers get promoted. Oh, don't even get me started on this. This is one of my favorite subjects. Is when someone finally decides to be a problem solver in the world, they all of a sudden find life has meaning. Let me talk to you a little bit. Of, these are some of my favorite scripture memory verses growing up. Um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. This is Jesus' words. He says, you, everybody say you. you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all the houses." In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give, your glory, and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let me show you another one of my favorite scripture memory verses. Psalms chapter 138, verse 8. The Lord will fulfill his, what does it say? Purpose for me. What is your purpose? What are you here on this earth for? I remember being 12 years old and asking this question for the very first time. And the reason why is because I could barely stay eligible in school. Someone asked me the other day, at, we were at the golf course, and they said, hey, you played high school golf, didn't you? I said, yeah. They said, were you pretty good? I said, yeah, I was really good. They said, how'd you rank? I said, I didn't rank. I never played one high school tournament. You know why? Because I couldn't stay eligible. I'm serious. That is the saddest thing ever. For any kid in the room that you're like, I'm struggling in school. You'll probably become a pastor someday. <laughs> I'm serious. There were so many distractions. There was so, so many heartbreak. If it wasn't for Cooper Henderson, who was, who was there for me constantly, helping me in school, getting me in study hall, helping me make it, I, I wouldn't have graduated high school. And now, I, I'm, I'm not dumb. I'm very smart. I, I just couldn't learn very well. And today, I tell you what, 
man, I, I, I crave information. I love, God can do something in your life too. But at 12 years old, I started asking this question because how am I ever going to become anything in life being the person that I am? I can't even stay eligible for school. And I began to ask God, what'd you make me for? What'd you make me for? And you're the shocker. Here's the shocker. He began to tell me. He began to tell me. And little by little, chip by chip, you know how you eat a box of crackers? One bite at a time. But you know how you kill yourself? Try to eat a whole box of crackers. <laughs> and that's the story of your purpose. Don't try eating the whole box. Just take one bite at a time. Chew it up, taste it, savor it, and swallow it. And then what do you do after that? You take another bite. And if you're not chewing, you're not growing. And your, your whole purpose of your marriage, the whole purpose of your life, the whole purpose of you is a continually chasing after Jesus. And it says here, it says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I love it. In Romans chapter 12, verse 12, this is one of my favorites. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of, renewal of your mind. That by testing, everyone say testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It's this whole thing that you will be tested. You will be tested. But what you're going to have to find that in the testing, you're going to find your purpose. You're going to find the things you love. You're going to find the things that God put in your heart to do. You're going to the things that are going to come about naturally in doing it. It's the whole identity and finding out not only who Jesus is, but now to find out who you are in Jesus. This is where true, true purpose comes from. One of my pr favorite prophets the entire Old Testament is Jeremiah. They referred to him as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah cried over uh, God's people, literally cried, wanting, wanting God's best for their life. I want to read you the calling of Jeremiah, and maybe just this calling of Jeremiah will tell you you're not in the boat alone if you've ever questioned God ever using you. If you're in this room and you say, I have a checkered past, or I'm shy, or I'm bashful, I don't know what I would say, you're in good company, because every man and woman of God ever used by God didn't think God should use them. But God used them, and in using them, it did not make them look good. It made God look good. Yeah. And you want to look good for God? Just let him use you. And you see, and it, it, it reveals so much in you of who God is in his faithfulness when you let God be God and you quit trying to be you. It says this, Jeremiah 1, verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Think of the depth of that little sentence. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. What is a prophet? A prophet goes and tells the word of the Lord. Just go tell what God tells you to say. Just go say what God tells you to say. It goes on, it says, then I said, and this is the excuse all of us have, oh, Lord, you know that? You know that, ah, oh, Lord part? Oh, Lord, God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, stop. The reason why I love this is that speaks to us in this room who's ever had the insecurity of stopping and thinking, oh, Lord, how could you ever use me? Oh, Lord, you need to use Heather, or you need to use Ty, you need to use Kelly, you need to use Jeff. Oh, Lord, but for all the young people in the room, you say, but I'm just a kid. I'm just a kid. How could God ever use me? Look what he says. Do not say that I'm only a youth. For to, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. Think about that. Think about the moment Jeremiah said, let me tell you all this story. There's, there's this part where I told God, I just, it, I don't know how you could ever use me. This is me. This is me having jitters up here. This is me writing, okay? I'm writing. And Jeremiah's writing. He's telling this incredible story. And he says, but then the most amazing thing happened. God touched my mouth. 
He can touch your mouth too. In fact, I, I got a bigger deal. He can touch your wallet. He can touch your heart. He can touch your family. God is in the touching business. And what he touches, he blesses. What he touches, he blesses. It says, he touched my mouth and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations, over kingdoms, to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Okay, let me tell you why this is such a big deal. There are some people in the room that you would go, I am all for this. This is great. But I'm talking to the oil-filled hand in the room today. That you go, listen, all I do is I get a phone call early in the morning, and I get phone calls late at night, and I work my tail off. And if you knew the guys I went to work with, Ty, this works for everybody, but this is a rough world. I don't, I don't think God even wants to be with some of the guys I know. And let me tell you, he made the guys you're referring to right now. Okay? And, and you don't have to have any ability but just a willingness to allow God to touch your heart. Do y'all know that I, there are people right now that I hang out with that probably have never been prayed for their entire life. They've probably never had a Christian friend their entire life. I'm with them every day. I'm with them every day. And I'm praying for them every day, every day, every day. For two years, I've been praying for them every day, every day. But you know what? I have not seen them make a choice to follow Jesus what I have seen, what I have seen, is that he keeps telling me, keep praying for him, keep praying for him. And there's going to be a victory one day. In fact, there's been several friends, several friends that in the last two years literally have never heard about Jesus before, but just hanging around Heather and I got to see Jesus and then started asking questions. And then Heather and I were able to lead them to Jesus. And, and you may be the only Jesus someone ever sees, and you may go, well, Ty, I don't know if that's a good thing. Trust me, if you, let, if you keep following Jesus, you're going to start looking like Jesus. If you start following Jesus, you're going to start looking like Jesus. And the most important part here is at some point, he's going to touch your mouth. And it may be in the form of prayer. That when I get to this stop sign and I get to this stop sign, in between those two stop signs, every day, I'm going to pray for my friend. I've never prayed for somebody in my entire life. And then it may be something as simple as your buddy sitting in your truck. And saying, listen, man, I didn't know who to turn to. I didn't know who to talk to. I just felt like I was supposed to come talk to you. In this one moment, you're going to go, Lord, I don't know what to say. And right then, he's going to touch your mouth again. And he's going to touch your mouth again, and you're going to know exactly what to say. In that one moment, in that perfect timing, behold, I put my words in your mouth. This is such a big deal. You have a divine purpose. You really do. This isn't just an Old Testament story. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, it says this. Then Jesus came into the region of uh, Caesarea of Philippi. He asked his disciples, what did he ask them? He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Who do you, who do you, who do men say that I am? Okay? Now, now think about that for a minute. Who do men say that Jesus is? You know what the problem with today is that some people would say, I don't like Christians because Christians act like this. Oh, come on. We're not talking about Christians. We're talking about Jesus. The, the last thing in the world any of us wants to do is turn someone into a Christian. Okay? We're not looking for more Christians. We're, we're looking for more Christ followers. And you say, well, Tyler, it was the same thing. Lately, it's not. Lately, a Christian is more of a churchgoer. I'm talking about getting to the root, back to what it meant Follow Jesus. So remember, we're not trying to turn people into Christians, per se. Go with me here. We're trying to get them to look to Jesus as the author and the finisher of their faith. Does this make sense? Okay, so this is, this is huge. Jesus turns and says, who do your buddies say that I am? Well, some say, you know, if you go to church, you're a Christian. Some say that uh, if you listen to the, to the right guy on TV, you're a Christian. Some say if you have your church's bumper sticker on your bumper sticker in Hobbs, New Mexico, that makes you a Christian. And they are the red lightness running suckers I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> and Jesus says, yeah, but who do you say that I am? Is, 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 is a Christian someone who has the church bumper sticker 
on your car? Is a Christian somebody who goes to church? Is a Christian, I'll put it in Jesus' words, Jesus said this, some say you're, or, or the, his buddies said this, some say you're John the Baptist, some say you're Elijah, others Jeremiah, or other prophets. But then Jesus asked a really pointed question. He said, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Okay, who do they say that I am? But who do you say that I am? You think the bumper sticker deal is a, a legitimate follow Jesus thing? Well, no, Lord, you know, no. I think anybody could kind of stick a bumper sticker on your car. I, I think anybody could go to church, to tell you the truth. And if it's a healthy church, not all Christians go to church. So you can go to church and not be a Christian. Yeah, well, okay, I think you're onto something Jesus says. And he says, but who do you say that I am? Peter spoke up. Peter, oh, ear cutting off, cussing. Peter spoke up. Okay? <laughs> Peter spoke up as Peter said this. Peter says this. We got it? Next one. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, uh, uh, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ. You are the Son of the living God. You are the Messiah. You are the Messiah. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Yeah. But my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter. He's changed his name around the spot. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Yeah. Heather and I were sitting down. What's our point in today? I have two points in today. And the band's going to come up. And we're going to do something really cool. Here's the first one. The most important thing for you to be the person that God's called you to be. Look at me. Don't look at them. They're really cute, but I'm even better. Okay? <laughs> We're learning about Jesus today. And I want you to listen to what I have to say. Number one thing. Okay? For you to understand. For you to understand who you are in Christ Jesus. You have to understand who Christ Jesus is. Okay? The more you chase him the more you start looking like him. The goal is not to be a church goer. Hey, can we turn that down a little bit? Chris, help me out, buddy. The goal is not to become a Christian. The goal is to become a Christ follower. Does that make sense? Okay. Second thing is this. Once we know him, we make him known. Heather and I were talking about this, and this is the point. Um, this is an old Master's Commission saying right here. This was the goal of every disciple in Master's Commission. Two things. To know Him and to make Him known. To know Him and to make Him known. To know Him and to make Him known. Uh, have you guys ever heard the song by Matthew West called Do Something? It's about the coolest little song ever. Okay? And let me just tell you, on the internet, this song gets slammed. Slammed. But I love this song. I love songs that get slammed. Okay? Let me read this. Let me, let me read it a little bit to you. Okay? He said, I woke up this morning. Saw our world full of trouble now. Thought, how do we ever get so far down? How is it ever going to turn around? So I turned my eyes to heaven and thought, God, why don't you do something? Well, I just couldn't bear the thought of people living in poverty children sold into slavery the thought disgusted me so I took my I shook my fist towards heavens and said God you don't why don't you do something and God said I did I created you and you remember the chorus it goes like this if not us then who and if not me then you right now it's time for us to do something if not now then when when will we see the end to all this pain? It's not enough to do nothing. It's time for us to do something. And then my second, the second part is so good. I'm tired of talking about how we are God's hand and feet. But it's easier to say than to be. Like angels in apathy who tell ourselves, it's all right, somebody else will do something. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of life with no desire. I don't want a flame. I want a fire. I don't want to be one who stands up and says, I'm going to, I, I don't want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to, I want to be the one who stands up and says, I'm going to do something. And it goes back to the chorus. If not us, then who? And if not me, then you. Right now, 
it's time for us to do something. And you know what? That brings me to my closing. And why today is such a special day. Today is Baptism Sunday. And there are people literally saying, I'm ready to do whatever God wants me to do. I'm ready to do whatever it is, even if it means in front of a group of people in my shorts and t-shirt, get my hair all wet, go into a horse trough. Oh, come on. You've got to be a Christian if you get baptized in a horse trough. That's Maybe not. I'm just joking. I'm just joking, okay? And it's this moment where you look at the courage of faith. And they're doing it because, for one reason, not because the church told them to, but because they know this is the first act of obedience after accepting Jesus Christ, their personal Lord and Savior. This is well with their soul. Let me teach you a word. We're all going to say it together. You ready? You may want to write this in your Bibles. You may want to make this the anthem for 2019. Are you ready? It's the word now. Everybody say it. Now. Everybody say it. Now. When? The thing about now is when should I follow Jesus? When should I ask, here I am, Lord, what do you want to do? When should you be willing to do whatever for the Father? When should you be baptized? Oh, some of you didn't say anything, but that's, listen, (laughs) now. And I I just want, I want to throw something out there. I'm going to do a what if, okay? If you're in this place and you are being baptized, okay, I want you to get your stuff ready, gather all your stuff up. We're going to sing a couple songs, and, and then uh, y'all are going to go change and come back in here. We're going to be partying and getting ready for you, okay? But I want to show you Acts chapter 22, verse 12, okay? This goes for everybody. And it says, and now, did you see it? Paul, the apostle, okay, Paul, he would eventually be Paul but he's Saul. He would eventually write the majority of the New Testament. But right now, he is in the born-again experience, okay? Jesus just met him, knocked him off his horse. He's completely blinded and can't see. Ananias has opened up his house, cared to his knees, needs, and now all of a sudden, he's in this place to where his heart has been changed. He's not the same person he used to be. And he turns to Ananias who God is using to disciple him. And he turns and he basically says, what do I need to do? What do I do? And Ananias, who is just kind of nervous about even having this guy in his house because he has killed all the Christians and and, and we've now hosted him in our home. And Ananias is wondering if this is really a God thing. And he hears Saul, which will be Paul eventually, ask, what do I need to do? And he says, and now Paul why are you waiting arise and be baptized and wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord Paul why are you waiting any longer if you keep saying no to this you're going to keep saying no to everything God asks you to do from this moment on and so I just thought we'd do something here a little crazy We're going to have an opportunity for anyone in this room, not just the ones who signed up for baptism, but anyone that you would just go, you know what, that is something I've put off and I've put off and I've put off or I've never done. But my gosh, I keep telling God, wait, wait, wait. And God keeps saying, now, today, we've done something kind of cool. We're going to give you every reason to be baptized that you would turn and say, well, let's keep putting it off. Okay, here's what we've done. In the back right now, we've invested in hair products. But the ladies, if you're in this room and God keeps saying, I want you to get baptized, and you you say, God, I'm not prepared. I I mean, how am I going to get my hair? My hair looks so nice. We've got hair dryers, hairspray. We got all the good stuff. It's in the bathroom right now. There's no excuse. As soon as you're done getting baptized, you go back in there, fix your hair again. Okay? We've got a change of clothes for you. We have purchased change of clothes. You go back there. We're going to give you, we even have underwear. I'm, I am church lady serious. We have underwear for men and underwear for women. We have a t-shirt. We have shorts. 
We have everything. We have everything you need to go back there, put your stuff in a bag. We'll give you the clothes. You come in here, you get baptized. You go back in, we'll give you a towel. You get to take the towel home, okay? You get to put your stuff back on, okay? We'll give you just stuff to get you back home, underwear, the whole deal. And you get, you get back home. We have, right now you may say, well, my, my mom would kill me. My mom would absolutely kill me if I'm baptized and she's not here. We have hired a photographer, okay? <laughs> We have hired a photographer that will take your pictures. You can give it to her. We have the video camera ready to go so that we can video this. And we want to send you a DVD so that you can tell everybody, show, come over to my house. We're cooking tortillas tonight. It's going to be great. And, and, and we're going to watch my baptism. And if you can't stand it, you're like, no, they have to be here. We have people right now that are volunteered. They're waiting in the back who have agreed to pick up your cell phone. You, you, you open it up for them. And we'll FaceTime anybody you want. And we will FaceTime them while you get baptized in this moment. There is nothing we have not thought of so that you can finally give Jesus a yes. Okay? Okay? Are you ready? So right now, your heart's beating out of your chest. You're like, oh, Lord. That's exactly how Jeremiah did it. And what did Jeremiah say? He says, Lord, I can't. I'm only a youth. What's your excuse? Because when God touches your heart, are you still full of excuses? Or are you ready to be the person God's called you to be? And to never give God a no ever again. So here we go. I told Heather this morning, I'm not going to pressure him. I've been praying for him way too much. This is your decision between Jesus and you. But in your heart right now, you would say, there's no doubt in my mind, I need to be baptized. Would all of our baptism candidates, if you're in this room, would you stand to your feet right now? You're going to go with CG. Very good. How awesome. If you're in this room and you would say, Ty, I would like to be baptized. And there is no excuse I'm giving God. Dale's walking out. These folks are walking out. And on the count of three, we got everything taken care of. But you know this is something you need to do in your life. On the count of three, would you stand to your feet right now? CG's going to meet you back at the back. And uh, today's going to be the coolest day ever. Ready? One, two, three. Stand up. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, stand up. Head that way. Head that way. That's so cool. Anybody else? How cool? That's so awesome. Oh, don't miss this. Don't miss this. This is so awesome. Last call. One, two, three. Jump up. Okay. Let's sing a couple songs. Come on, stand on your feet. So, uh, wasn't today cool? The more you know him, the more you know him, the more you know him, the more you know him. The more you know him. Okay, I'm going to get this in. The more you the more you want to make him known. Let's tell God yes. Let's stand to our feet. If today you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, but for some reason, gosh, you're not the same person you came here as. Something has touched your heart. And you can think of no reason why you should ever tell Jesus no. And you're ready to tell Jesus yes. Pastor Jeff and I are going to be right over here. We'd love to pray with you. And today, you can walk out of this room as a new creation in Christ Jesus. But you have to say yes to Him. Not to church, not to a pastor, but to Him. We'll be right over here. It's time for us to love God, love people, and have no limits in our life. Pick up some extra Atari cards and invite your friends. You guys have a great week in the Lord. See you later.